Hello everybody, this is Tim again. Um, I recently saw uh, Curse of Chucky, the new Child's Play film. I just want to say that this is a good film. It's uh, almost the uh, third best film in the series. Uh, Bride of Chucky being second best, Child's Play 2 being third best, this film taking fourth place. It's almost better than the second one, but the final of the second one raises it slightly above this film, but not by much. Uh, this is a three-star film of a possible four. I really enjoyed this film, and Don Mancini has definitely redeemed this franchise after Curse. I mean, after fucking Seed of Chucky, where he almost killed the franchise. So now that the franchise is back on track, I just want to say, Don, please don't make another Seed of Chucky. Please, I'm begging you, man. Please. <laughs> but uh, this is a really good film, and like I've said, it brings the franchise back on track. This is the darkest of the six films. Uh, Chucky has a new look in this film, but it makes sense within the context of the story. Uh, so I didn't mind it. It took me a little bit to warm up to it, but once I did, it was it's fine. It actually looks really creepy in some shots. This film is the most like the original in tone and in suspense and horror-wise. I would say this is the scariest film after the original, but not the best film after the original. But it's still a really good film. People who really like the suspense and horror of the first film and have missed that will, will probably love this one. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I love this one. Uh, it's a really good movie, and I really don't think you even need a sequel. Uh, to this movie, but if we do get one, if this film does really well, which I really do think it's going to do really well on Blu-ray and DVD, uh, if we do get one, then uh, I'm all for Don Mancini directing another one because he really redeemed himself here in his directing. is much better in this film. But to start the story off, you got Fiona Duruff playing uh, Nika, a character in the wheelchair. Yes, her last name is Duruff. She's uh, Brad Duruff's daughter in real life, and uh, at first I thought she was casting more on name value, but her acting is really good in this film. She actually surprised me. She plays a girl, Nika, in a wheelchair in the film. She has a sister named Barb, and she, Barb has a husband named Ian, and they have a nanny named Jill, and they got a daughter named Alice. And um, uh, Nika is living with her mom, and her mom's, like, really depressed and shit and paints pictures of sunflowers and stuff, <laughs> daisies or whatever. Um, you get a package arriving in the mail here, uh, but it's obviously a Chucky doll. Uh, Nika's mom doesn't like it. Uh, you get a scene here where the... Delivery guys like flirting with Nika, and then uh, Nika's mom tells her tells her basically that he was just being nice. Uh, he's she's really like uh, kind of condescending to Nika. Like she wants she basically wants her to stay at home with her for eternity. <laughs> Nika kind of gets pissed about that. Uh, Nika's mom doesn't like the Chucky doll. Throws it in the garbage. Nika wakes up in the middle of the night hearing a scream. You get good suspense here, good kill. You don't see the kill, but it plays out really well here, and the direction is really cool. And uh, Nika comes down there, and she see, you see like a puddle of blood on the floor, and Nika sees like a reflection in it. Really good scene here, great directing there, uh, creative. Uh, you find out, well, obviously her mom's dead, and she, everybody thinks she committed suicide. Pan over to Chucky over there, fucking sitting in a rocking chair, rocking back and forth, and uh, the camera pans all the way around, and then to the other side of Chucky, and you get, well, you get the title pop up and say, Curse of Chucky. <laughs> Curse kind of makes me think of Curse of Michael Myers, which is not a very good film, but well, at least the theatrical cut isn't, the producer's cut is much better, but anyway, to this film here, also titled Curse. So, uh, she's, uh, the camera pans all the way around, uh, everybody, and, and then it's like the next day, and they're taking the police and the coroner or whatever, it's like taking her mom's body out of there. Uh, she's, uh, sitting at home, and then the rest of the family arrives to, like, consult with each other, and Nika's sister in the movie, Barb, is a total asshole, she's like trying to fucking get uh, Nika to uh, sign over uh, her half of the house so they can sell it, and she can like get all the money out of it, or, or whatever, <laughs> she just wants money basically, and she like really condescending to Nika in the movie, Nika tells him that she's gonna make dinner, and Barb's like, you're gonna make dinner, he's like, you hate this woman, you don't give a shit that she's gonna die, you're just basically waiting for her to die, and through the movie, you think that her husband, Ian, who looks exactly like Mark Ruffalo, <laughs> you think he's uh, cheating on her with the nanny, Jill, but come to find out, it's actually uh, Barb who's cheating on her husband with the nanny. So it's like, there's some lesbianism in this movie, guys. You might enjoy it. <laughs> but anyway, so that makes you hate her even more because Ian, the husband, is like, he's a nice guy. And he's not really a dick or anything. He's like the only other likable character in the movie. And they got a priest with him called Father Frank. And, well, he's all right. Um... So, uh, Alice, the little girl, goes to the bathroom. Chucky's, like, disappeared. He's in the bathroom. He can jump scare. He, like, slings his arm out at her. And it's a pretty decent little intense scene. Uh, Ian and, uh, 
fucking Jill, the nanny, get the door open, but she's all right, even though she was screaming, she just got like a jump scare, I guess, so she's fine, you get some lines here that kind of step on the toes of the original a little bit too much, this film is like gigantic fan service through and through, which I, but not in a bad way, I do enjoy it, but you get a line here that kind of is a little bit too close to the original, where she says, Chucky's my friend to the end, and I'm like, eh, I don't really need that, a little bit too close to the original, but, um, they're all chilling out down there. Now that Alice has Chucky, she loves Chucky basically, and she says Chucky wants to know what's for dinner. <laughs> so uh, Nika says she's going to cook dinner, and that's where you get to see where Barb's like an asshole. And she's like, you're going to cook dinner? <laughs> so Nika goes to cook dinner. She's cooking for everybody, and she leaves the room, and fucking Chucky pulls into one of the mills of rat poles, and I guess he was going to pull them all, but Nika makes it back in before he gets a chance to, so it's like a question of who is going to eat the one with the rat poles in. It's a pretty cool scene. You get like a Russian roulette scene here. It's pretty entertaining. The camera like spins around over top of like everybody eating, and uh, you think it's going to be the little girl Alice at first, but it turns out it's the priest. Uh, they played it up a lot. I'm disappointed you don't get to see the priest like wreck his car or whatever or wreck. I mean, uh, but you get to see the aftermath and his fucking neck is like stuck and, and this big uh, piece of metal is like right at his neck, like the only thing holding his head in place. And one of the cops is like friends with him or something like that, or goes to or uh, goes to his church, I believe, and he gets him to move the piece of metal that's holding that's hitting him in the neck, and his fucking head falls all the way backwards and comes completely off. Pretty cool scene. Uh, meanwhile, back at the house. Uh, you find out the well. You find out that uh, Barb is cheating on her husband with the nanny Jill. Like I said, <laughs> uh, Chucky goes missing. Alice is wanting to find him. You get a uh, funny scene here. They're like watching home movies, and Ian is fell asleep on the couch, and Nika comes in there uh, and sees Chucky laying there and uh, sitting there next to Ian, and you think Ian might be dead, but he wakes up and he picks up uh he picks up Chucky and. Uh, He's talking to him, and he's like, you get a funny scene here where Ian's like, I haven't been spending enough time with my daughter, and Chucky goes, life is short, ha ha ha, <laughs> pretty funny. Uh, he gives the doll to Nika, and she has to take it upstairs in the elevator to give it to Alice, obviously, and the little electricity goes out, and Nika's stuck in the elevator. Uh, almost the electricity pops back on Chucky's head, is all it was spun all the way around, he looks at her and goes, ha ha ha, I'm fucking laughing. Pretty creepy scene, actually, this movie is actually the scariest after the original, I would say. Um. But yeah, then Nika finally manages to get out of the elevator, and uh, she realizes she's cut herself. It's actually Chucky who cut her. He like, keeps cutting her on the legs and fucking with her because she can't feel that, so he'll cut her just for fun. Um, so she manages that up. The Barb's sitting there acting like a douchebag, trying to get her to give up the rest of the house or whatever. <laughs> but it's Nika's home, and she's like, fuck this shit, and I don't blame her. Um... So after that, you get uh, Barb is putting uh, Alice to sleep, and you get a funny, funny ass scene here. She's getting uh, Alice to say her prayers, and she's like, "Why don't you pray for Chucky?" And she goes, "Chucky said there is no God." <laughs> I'm like, "Okay, that's just pretty funny." And it's coming a storm, and uh, Barb leaves. It's coming a storm. Alice is scared, sh scared shitless. She puts the blanket over top of her and Chucky. She's got a fucking flashlight shining on Chucky. Um, it's the first scene where you get to see Chucky come to life, and uh, Alice is like, Chucky, I'm scared, and he goes, you fucking should be. <laughs> pretty entertaining, pretty funny. Uh, after that, uh, Barb is like fucking Skyping uh, video, like video chat with uh, Jill, and uh, she sees Chucky moving in the background, and she thinks it's Alice, and she gets Jill to like, she's trying to tell Jill to check on him, and there's this bucket where it's been collecting water where the roof is leaking. And she, uh, Jill turns around and sees Chucky standing there and he fucking kicks the bucket and knocks the water on the plug-in where the laptop's plugged up that she's on. It fucking causes her to get electrocuted and her fucking eye like vaporizes and gets a big black spot around it. And smoke's coming off of it and she falls over dead so Jill's dead. Pretty good death scene here. I enjoyed it. This film has a lower budget than other films but it works in this film's favor. The film doesn't look lower budget. It looks pretty much like a film that should have went to theaters. Uh, but um. Yes, this film is direct to DVD, direct to Blu-ray, but it's not and not in a bad way. The lower budget for this film works really well, and it's the only film that comes close to being scary as the original. Uh, but yeah, she's dead. Uh, Barb gets up to go check on Jill. Basically, G Barb's character is so hateable in this movie. She doesn't even care uh, about her own daughter. It doesn't even seem like she does. And uh, Ian wakes up and he basically tells her she's fucked that he put a camera inside the doll and they're recording everything and he's going to use evidence of her cheating on him to get sole custody of their daughter and she 
and Vic gets pissed off and leaves and she's uh well before the electricity started messing up after Chucky killed the nanny, you get a scene where Nika is well, she calls and fucking tries to find out where the doll came from and they tell her it came from the evidence depository. And uh she's on the computer looking up like Chucky doll evidence and she sees like little references to all the other incidences from the other films. Uh so yeah, yeah uh, this film is a sequel to Seed. Just so people know, I mean, really know, because I've heard so much confusion on the internet of people wondering, like, is this a sequel to 3 or a sequel to Seed? Just to completely clarify this, once and for all, this is a sequel to Seed. I mean, because <laughs> I don't want to repeat myself too many times by saying this is a sequel to Seed, but it is a sequel, just so people will stop asking. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, she looks up like Charles Lee Ray or whatever, and fucking William A. Uh, so back to what I was talking about, uh, Barb is there with the doll and she's arguing with Nika because she thinks Nika has known about Ian recording everything this whole time or whatever. And um, Nika's like trying to tell her just to put the fucking doll down, but uh, Barb tells her to go fuck herself basically and heads upstairs because she thinks Alice is up there because she's seen Chucky moving earlier. So she thinks that was Alice, so she heads upstairs trying to find Alice. This movie has some really tense and creepy shit here. Uh, the Chucky doll is, <laughs> is like fucking sitting there and he's got like little, uh, like little plastic pill and spot on his face and uh barb goes to like peel it off and she sees this uh fucking um, stitches underneath <laughs> obviously um and all at once she puts her finger towards chucky's mouth he fucking leaps out at her pretty effective jump scare her he leaps out at her she falls down he walks up to her and he and he started he peels off the last bit of his face or his mask or whatever and he goes now alice knows there is no god <laughs> It's pretty entertaining, and he fucking stabs her in the eye. Well, before he gets, he stabs her in the eye, but right before he does that, he says, you have your mother's eyes, and they were always too fucking close together. <laughs> pretty entertaining, pretty funny. So he stabs her in the eye, fucking cuts her eyeball out, <laughs> which is a pretty good death scene for such a douchebag character. Uh, electricity's out, so Nika has to crawl all the way up through there, and she's at the bottom of the steps, uh, heading up to the attic. And uh, she's uh, basically hollering up there, trying to check on Barb, and then fucking Barb's eyeball comes rolling down the steps, pretty funny, pretty entertaining scene, and Barb's body comes tumbling down the steps, falls on top of Nika, she throws Barb's body off of her, sees Chucky up there standing, pretty creepy uh, little scene here, Chucky starts walking down the steps, talking about how he's gonna come get her, and he makes it to the bottom of the steps, fucking squishes Barb's eyeball, <laughs> which is pretty funny, Nika gets a wheelchair, extra wheelchair she had out of the closet, takes off in it, um, she manages to get away from Chucky. She makes it in there where Ian is, wakes him up. You get a montage where they find all the dead bodies in the house. Uh, Ian is looking for Alice. Uh, Nika gets locked up in the garage where the car is, and Chucky's like in the in the vehicle. He's thinking, I thought he was going to run her over at first, but he's like going to choke her death with exhaust fumes. Uh, she manages to get an axe, bust the window open. She tries to get the keys, but fucking Chucky swallows them. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. Uh, Ian makes it back in there. Uh, through the movie, uh, apparently the character Nika had had a heart attack once before, or a heart problem once before, and that uh, she might have another one if, sh if she gets really stressed out. So Ian comes in there and takes the axe from her and thinks that she's the one that's murdered everybody because, well, they're the only two people in the house. <laughs> and she starts having heart problems again. She wants him to give her a shot, but you don't know if he does or not. And the camera, I mean, well, that screen like fades out, and she wakes back up. And, of course, he did give her the shot, and she's tied up. And uh, he tries to figure out, figure out what the fuck's really going on. So he looks at the footage from the uh, camera he planted in the doll. He's looking at the footage, and all once Chucky fucking comes in there. And, well, you get a scene on the footage where Chucky's like playing hide and go seek with Alice and getting her to hide. And he goes, just shut the fuck up or something like that. And, and uh, Alice goes, Chucky, stop swearing. It's kind of like a little funny throwback to part three. It works. Um, like I said, this movie has a lot of fan service in it. Um, and then fucking Chucky grabs the back of the wheelchair, rams it into Ian, and he fucking does a flip and lands on his back. Chucky walks up out of the axe, and he, he says a really funny line here, say hi to the missus for me, and chops his fucking, like, whole lower half of his face off. Pretty graphic. This is the unrated version I watched, so I'm not sure what the differences, differences are between this and the R-rated version, but this was pretty damn graphic, and it worked really well. Probably my favorite death scene in the movie. Uh, he chops off the whole bottom of his face, uh, so he's, he's fucked, he's dead. Uh, then Chucky, like, fucking tries to attack, uh, Nika. Nika manages to get the tape off her mouth. She sticks her legs up at him, and he fucking hacks her legs instead of her, because she can't feel anything in her legs. Uh, she knocks him down, takes the axe, lops his head off. Um, so, he ain't got no head, basically, now. She, uh, she turns around, she manages to get loose, and tapes up her, uh, well, bandages up her wound on her leg from the axe. 
Uh, in the background, you see Chucky like taking his head. His body takes his head and puts his head back on, reattaches it. Chucky doesn't bleed in this film, which might disappoint some people that you don't get the whole him turning human thing or whatever again. Uh, but it didn't really bother me because I've had like five movies of that already. So <laughs> one without that doesn't really bother me. I guess this film takes place in the amount of time before he gets a chance to turn human. So I'm okay with that. So then Chucky fucking snaps his head back on. It spins back around. to, the, <laughs> And he runs and grabs her. Grabs the back of the wheelchair and fucking lunges her from the top of the stairs. All the way down to the marble floor. And she's like bleeding from her legs <laughs> where they've hit the floor. Chucky walks down the stairs. You get a flashback scene here where he explains to her why he's targeting her family. It's basically a revenge thing. When he was Charles E. Ray and when he was alive. Uh, he, is, he was friends with the family. He was one of their neighbors. And, uh, the the mom's husband died and she was pregnant with Nika and Charles Lee Murray is basically in love with her and he keeps her hostage and keeps bringing her daisies or sunflowers or whatever I don't remember which uh, but he keeps bringing her flowers and it's kind of shot like a comic book kind of like Sin City it's shot so like artistically it kind of takes me out of the horror of the movie that it had going for it but not not in a bad way and Brad Dourif gets more to chew on here in this film than the other ones he gets to actually play Charles Lee Ray again, and he does fine. He doesn't look as young as he did in the first movie, but he still has his long hair, and he, he's rocking the same coat from the beginning of Child's Play 1. So he, he does really good hair, and he's he's fine. He, he's perfect. Brad Dourif has the voice of Chucky. He's fine. It's not even worth mentioning because he does great again. Uh, but uh, you get the flashback scene, and come to find out she fucking like ratted him out to the police. <laughs> she had managed to rat him out, and the cops show up there to arrest him, take him down. He stabs her in the, the belly. Where she while she's pregnant with Nika is like retaliation for that, and that's why Nika's been in a wheelchair her entire life. Uh, the police show up and, and uh, they chase him out of there, and pretty much you get the scene from the beginning of the first Child's Play movie where they chased him into the toy store and got him down, so it all connects together. <laughs> so the, the reason he's in the doll, so that's the reason he wants revenge against them, and he's fucking pretty much wiped them all out. And, he, and you get a funny line here from Brad Dourif, and he goes, "Now you're the last one standing, so to speak." <laughs> oh, that was a funny Chucky line. Uh, and but she then she like uh, she's fucking with him and telling him that he never actually killed Andy Barkley and uh, tells him that um, 25 years is the slowest fucking murder in history and she's like what were you waiting for a sign from God <laughs> then the electricity kicks back on she takes off crawling into the elevator and closes the doors he takes off running after her. he's like no <laughs> he takes off running after her, slips on the blood falls down he manages to get back up takes off running after her, fucking takes a knife in his hand starts cutting her hands. Uh, she grabs the blade out of his hand. Uh, she gets a, She gets into the. She takes the fucking blade into the elevator with her. Says, "You want to play, motherfucker?" <laughs> Pretty funny. He opens up the elevator. You get the scene from the trailer where he's running directly at her. The all effects in this movie are good, despite the lower budget. They're fine. He's running at her. Uh, she. He fucking jumps on her, starts scratching her and biting on her. Uh, she stabs him in the back and rips the knife out of his back and stuff and flies up in the air, kind of like snow. Like I said, you don't get the whole him bleeding and turning human in this one. Because I, I guess this movie takes place before he starts turning human. But it works. Uh, that wasn't too big of a deal for me. So the stuff in flies up there, kind of like snow, cool imagery. Chucky jumps back up, which we know isn't going to. Uh, there's a, the cop in the film who is like friends with the priest has been heading towards the, the family's house to try to find out any more information on why this might have happened to the priest. And he makes it there and fucking Chucky's over there sitting in the rocking chair like the beginning of the movie again. And uh, he obviously thinks Nika has committed these murders, and he takes her fucking ass. Uh, <laughs> he arrests her, basically. Uh, and then you get a courtroom scene where uh, Chucky's like one of the one of one of the pieces of evidence, <laughs> and uh, they're putting her in a home with a criminally insane. So, like I said, this is the, this is the darkest of the Chucky films, in, in a good way. <laughs> it's the only one that Chucky. This is the only other movie that Chucky's actually been scaring in. I mean, honestly. Um, so, uh, they're taking her to a home for the criminally insane, but while she's being wheeled out of there, she looks at Chucky and says, I'm still alive. <laughs> like, after all this time, he still didn't kill them all and just didn't get her. <laughs> but, yeah, she's getting put in a home for the criminally insane. Uh, that's one of the problems I have with the movie, the final. I don't mind her going to the criminally, home for the criminally insane or whatever, but the final of the film, uh, <sighs> Chucky's waited 25 years to get revenge on his family. I don't think he's going to stop just because the fucking cop comes in. Why, why did he just kill the cop and then just keep coming after it? I don't know, but whatever. <laughs> it's the only thing that elevates the second film slightly above it. And this film has, like, multiple endings, like, all stacked on the one. But it doesn't hurt the film. I mean, bad at all. It's like Don Mancini has one, one to please every type of fan of this movie, regardless of whether they like Scary Chucky, Funny Chucky, or Completely Goofy Chucky, like in Seed. He wanted to please everybody, and he does well at it.
Tom Mancini does a great job directing in this movie, and I would like to see him do another one because this film has redeemed the franchise, and I really hope he doesn't do another seed. But um, anyway, so uh, after the trial's over, the cop takes the takes Chucky, takes him in the evidence bag, and uh, the cop's in the vehicle with him. He's talking to somebody on the phone, and he says he wants his money because he's going to deliver him a doll. And then you get Jennifer Tilly in the fucking backseat, pops up and slits his throat and says they never learn. Call back to a bride of Chucky, which is fun. It helps the film. And she looks in the bag, basically talks to Chucky and says, okay, who's next? <laughs> the movie could have just ended there, but it keeps going. Like I said, this film feels like multiple endings, but not in a bad way. So the film keeps going, and you get a funny scene where she's she, you basically find out she's the one that's been sending Chucky to different families' houses, and she's the one that fixed him up and put, put like plastic covering over his face to cover up his stitches so uh, so the fucking family would keep him because no family is going to give a, a stitched up, fucked up doll to their daughter. <laughs> but anyway, so you find out, she, you get a funny line where she's like, my mother always said you can't put a price on love. Kind of call back to Brian Chucky, and it works fine here. And uh, she's, the, she's, she's the one that's been shipping him out. Like, a, like Well, she's the one that's been shipping him to different people so he can get revenge. So, yeah, you find that out here. And then you get another scene. The movie could have just ended here, but you get another scene. Like I said, this movie wants to fan service everybody who enjoys everything. And you get a, a ult ultimate fan service right here where people, ever, anybody that's been wanting Chucky to actually possess somebody for all these movies, and you finally get it here pretty much. <laughs> You get Alice, the little girl, now living with her grandma, and Chucky's there, and she's like, Chucky, you found me. And he's like, she's like, where's grandma? And he goes, she's in the cellar. And, and Alice goes, what's he doing? What's she doing down there? Fucking Chucky goes, nothing. <laughs> pretty funny, pretty entertaining. The Chucky doll actually looks creepy here. Uh, and uh, he goes, uh, he's got a new game to play, Hide the Soul, which, of course, fans will know what he's talking about. Uh, so... She go, he goes, guess what, you're it. And she goes, why do I always have to be it? And, and he goes, because you're, you're somebody that nobody would ever suspect. <laughs> so it's uh, in Seed of Chucky, you kind of got the idea that, well, you got the idea basically that Chucky wanted to stay as the doll. But here he's like, he, has to, he wants to possess her so he can go after somebody that will commit a murder that he probably couldn't commit as the doll. So it's kind of like he wants to possess her because it'll make this murder much easier to carry out as the little girl. Um... And then the you know, camera kind of pans around while he's saying the chant. And you get a jump, one last jump scare where the grandma jumps up and like suffoc suffocating with the fucking plastic bag over her head. Pretty entertaining little jump scare for the end there, and it works well. And then that's Q in the movie. <laughs> Great little chiller ending that works fine for the film. Don Mancini has redeemed himself, like I've said, from C to Chucky with this film, and it works well. And I wouldn't mind seeing him direct another one. Uh, this is a three star film out of four. It's a, it's a good film. A really good film. I really love this film. I can't wait to buy it. And I definitely feel like this film is uh, going to warrant another one. But uh, the after credit scene, major spoiler here. You get an after credit scene where it's fucking six months later. And uh, the Chucky package or doll or whatever is being delivered to Alex Vincent from the first film. <laughs> playing Andy again. And uh, he takes him up to his house. And uh, Chucky's now back inside the doll, so whatever happened in that six months, uh, he's left Alice's body and went back inside the doll. Uh, so he's, uh, he cuts open the box with a knife that he's got with him, planning on getting the drop on Andy and killing him. He looks around, sees some pictures of Catherine Hicks and Kyle from the second film. He's, like, got a disgusted look on his face like he hates them. <laughs> it's pretty funny. And he's on the phone talking to his mom and saying, how how's Mike doing? And, uh, Mike from Mike's character from the first film, played by Chris Sarandon, he's asking how he's doing. He fucking tells his mom not to give him any surprises for his birthday, and uh, he says he he'll be he'll be by soon. Um, and then uh, Chucky thinks he's going to get the drop on him. Chucky turns around, and you get the funniest fucking scene in history. This is why this is this is scene right here is why this is the greatest cameo I've seen all here. And uh, Chucky thinks he's going to get the drop on him, turns around, raises his head up, fucking Andy's right there with a shotgun pointed right at his face and says, play with this. And Chucky's like, Andy, no. <laughs> he fucking just blows him away. And that's cue in the movie. So Andy pretty much kills Chucky at the end of the movie. <laughs> it started with child Andy, and now adult Andy has killed him. You don't even really need to make a sequel, really, after this. But if this film does well on Blu-ray and DVD, there will be a sequel regardless. But you don't really need one. But if they got a really cool-ass story, they can follow up with this maybe the, I think maybe they did the six month gap thing at the end with the bonus scene so they could kill Chucky off using Andy but still have room to make a sequel in between that time period and if that's the case that's fine 
But uh, if they can do a sequel with Alex Vincent back as Andy through the whole movie, then that would be even better. So, yeah, like I said, you don't really need a sequel. You could just end it here. But if they really have a good story and feel like they can do a sequel, then I'm all for it. Because, like I've said, Don Mancini has redeemed himself from C to Chucky. And if he can do a another good one, at least as good as this film, then fuck it, I'm fine with it. Because <laughs> I really enjoyed this film. And can't wait to own it on Blu-ray. But yeah, this is a really good film, and uh, my next review will be for Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D, finally finishing off those films. Uh, I figured I would go ahead and finish off the Chucky movies right now, well, until the next one, which I'm pretty, I'm pretty positive there's going to be another one, because I have a feeling this film's going to do really well in, in sales. But uh, I'll see you guys again with another review, and this film is really good. If you're a fan of Chucky, definitely check this film out. If you prefer the comedy, goofy Chucky from C to Chucky, you're going to hate this film, which if you do, I don't know why. but. Uh, if you prefer just like the scary Chucky and want him back and uh, you want something more along the lines of the first three movies, then you're going to love this film like I did. So definitely check it out if you're a Chucky fan and if you're a horror fan, I'd say check it out too. Uh, the acting in it is fine. The guy who plays Ian, the father, he does fine for what he has to do. Uh, Barb, the wife, she's a douchebag. She did fine playing a douchebag. Uh, Fiona Dourif playing Nika. Uh, she does fine. You really root for her. She's the most likable hero of this franchise after Andy from the first movie, in my opinion. Um, and then Brad Dourif is Chucky. He does fine. And the woman who plays Jill, the nanny, she does fine. She's kind of an asshole, too, but not as much of an asshole as Barb by any means. <laughs> and the guy who plays Father Frank, he's not in the movie too much, but um, he does fine with his little part. And that's pretty much it. This is a really good movie, and I would say third best film, uh, fourth best, well, fourth best film in the, in the series. Only barely beaten, beaten out by the second film because the ending, I mean the final of the second film slightly, slightly makes it more fun than this film. But yeah, this is still a really good film and I definitely look forward to another one. If Don Mancini directs it, then I'm fine with it. So I'll see you guys again with another review and I hope you have a good day.